What's going on? Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And today we're going to do some work with soccer math. So we're going to do a word problem. I know a lot of people don't like word problems, but we got to do word problems because word problems are how we are able to see the relevancy of mathematics. Without word problems and applications, you don't get to see the relevancy of mathematics. And also you don't get to learn the skills of problem solving. The skills of problem solving that you can apply in any area of your life ever. You know, no matter what the situation, what the scenario, you can apply different things that you learn in mathematics by solving word problems to different types of situations that you would have thought you would never be able to use. It'll surprise you. So the actual word problem is printed below the video in this in the description section. So read along as I read it out loud. All right. And we're dealing with soccer right now. Right. This is soccer math. Right. Soccer math. So if you play soccer, you should relate to this. If you watch soccer, you should relate to this. Um, if you're a fan of soccer, you should relate to this. All right. The problem reads like this. The perimeter of a soccer field at a local park is 260 feet. The length of the field is 36 feet more than the width. Find the dimensions of the soccer field. So what are we charged with doing? We're going to find the dimensions of the soccer field. Now, first of all, we got to be clear on all the vocabulary, right? First of all, what is the perimeter? What does that word even mean? Before we even get into what is the formula for perimeter, we need to know what that word means. The perimeter is the length around an object or some space, the length around some space, right? Whether it's a circular space, whether it's a rectangular space, whether it's a triangular space, the perimeter is the length around it, the length of all the edges added together to a total or the length of all the sides added up. That's what perimeter is, all right? That's what the word perimeter means. So before you do any math, you gotta know what the vocabulary is. So make sure you do yourself a favor and make sure you're familiar with all the vocabulary in any math problem that you see. And if you sit in class and your teacher is reading a problem or explaining a problem and using vocabulary that you don't understand or that you are not unaware of, do yourself the favor, advocate for yourself, raise your hand and ask the question, what does that term mean that you just said? I do not know what that term means. Can you tell me what that term means? All right, do not be embarrassed. Advocate for yourself. You need to know what the vocabulary is. If you don't know the vocabulary, you can't do the math. All right, so we talked about what the perimeter is. Also, what is the what is a dimension? Dimensions are like length and width. So you have vertical measurements of a shape. You have horizontal measurements of a shape. If it's a two-dimensional shape, meaning it's not 3D, right? So on a flat surface, it's got vertical, a vertical uh, measurement, right? Or a height, like people have a height, right? Um, and also it's got a horizontal measurement. You know what I'm saying? So vertical, horizontal, length, width, length, width. Those are dimensions. That's what we are going to find out. We're going to figure this out. Now, another thing we need to understand before we start talking about the perimeter and the formula for perimeter is what is the shape of a soccer field? So you got to know a little bit about soccer, right? The shape of a soccer field is not triangular. It's not circular. A soccer field is a rectangle. So because we know it's a rectangle, basically we don't even got to think about it as an actual soccer field. We can just think about it as a rectangle. It's just some random rectangle drawn on a piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to draw a rectangle. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a rectangle because I like to be able to visualize when I'm doing math. All right, so this is going to be our soccer field. Oh, <laughs> that ain't going to work. <laughs> All right, throw that away. Get him out of here. Um, let me grab a fresh marker. Wait, no, no, let me see. Let's see if this one works. Ah, that's better. We got a rectangle. And this is going to re represent our soccer field, this rectangle right here. All right, so that's our soccer field. And to my nephew, Maceo, if you're watching this video, remember, like I tell you all the time, I will cook you in soccer. Don't forget that. <laughs> I will cook you in soccer. Don't forget that. All right, so um, this is our soccer field, right? It's a rectangle. All right, now we need to know... What is the formula for the perimeter of any rectangle? The formula for the perimeter of any rectangle is P, which stands for perimeter, is equal to 2L, which is the length, 
plus 2w, which is the width. P equals 2L plus 2W. All right. Now, what does L stand for? The length of the rectangle. What does W stand for? The width of the rectangle. All right. So let's imagine, let's say this is the length and this is the length because because it's a rectangle, these sides are equal to each other. And this is the width. From here to here is the width, right? How wide it is, right? And then these sides are equal to each other. All right. So we got two L's, right? So the length of one times two will give you the total of the lengths and the length of the width or the, the width times two will give you the two W. All right. Now let's go back to the word problem. I'll grab my paper. So it said that the perimeter of a soccer field at a local park is 260 feet. So we know what P is. Eventually we're going to replace this letter P with the number 260. Now we don't know what the length is. We don't know what the width is. We're going to figure that out. Now, if you go back and focus in on the second sentence from the word problem, it says that the length of the field is 36 feet more than the width. So whenever you're doing any type of word problem and two items are being compared, whether it's two dimensions are being compared, whether it's two people's ages are being compared, whether it's an amount of two amounts, amounts of money are being compared, whether two weights are being compared, any type of quantities are being compared. What I suggest you do, you don't have to do it this way, but what I suggest you do is the second thing in the comparison the second thing in the comparison, not the first thing, the second thing in the comparison, let that be your variable. Let that be your single variable. So this says the length of the field, length is the first thing, is 36 feet more than the width. Width is the second thing. And when I say first and second, I'm talking about what is mentioned first, what is mentioned second. The length in that second, in that sentence, I mean, in that sentence, the length was mentioned first, the width was mentioned second. So whatever the word problem is, and you're going to see these comparison sentences a whole lot. When you start getting into word problems and doing a lot of word problems, you're going to notice a lot of these. The Something is compared to something else. Whatever the second thing is in the comparison listed in the sentence, just make that your variable. So what that means is this. Um, I got L and I got W, right? So width is second. So I'm going to just call that W. That's going to be my variable, my plain variable. I could have called it X, but since width, you know, starts with the letter W, let's just use W for our variable, all right? So now, so we're going to compare the length to that. The sentence says that the length of the field is 36 feet more than. What does the phrase more than mean? More than means you need to do addition. You need to do addition, right? More than means, it means addition. So 36 feet plus the amount of the width, 36 feet plus the amount of the width. So 36 feet more than this is going to be represented as 36 plus W. So that's the expression for our length. That's the expression for our width. They the same thing, right? Because width is width. Because remember, in a comparison, my recommendation is the second thing that's identified, just call it, let that be your variable. Let that be your single variable, whether it's X, whether it's Y, whether it's Z, whether it's the same letter, you know, just let that be. All right. So we got our two expressions. Now we can set up our equation. Now, why is this important? Let me let me talk a little bit more about that before we go on. In order for us to solve for anything, we need an equation that only has one type of variable in it. We can't solve this because it's got two different types of variables. It's got an L and a W. But look what I did with the L. Now the L is represented as 36 plus W. We already had a W right here. So now we got two, we got one type of variable. We got the same variable in two different places, but at least it's one type of variable. That's what you need in order to solve an equation. You can't solve an equation when you got two different variables. I mean, you can, but you can't solve an equation and get a single number if you got two different variables. You can solve and get an expression that one variable is equal to. Like for example, Somebody can say that, well, we solved for L by saying it's equal to 36 plus W. Technically, yes, we did. But 36 plus W, it's not a single number. It's not an actual number that's tangible that we know that we can use, you know, to say, OK, well, this is the dimension, you know, that we're looking for because it's not. It's an expression. Right. When we're looking for a single number as an answer. Right. Like 48, 72, 25, something like that. You need to have one single type of variable in your equation. All right, so now here come the fun part. Now this is the part where we replace everything that we know. So we know what P is, 
because the problem told us that the perimeter of the soccer field at the park is 260, 260 feet. So we're going to rewrite the equation with the numbers we know. So we got 260 is equal to 2 times, not L, what's L equal to? L is equal to 36 plus W. So we're going to replace the L with 36 plus W. So we got both. So two times, use parentheses, and then write the plus sign, and then plus two, and then the W stay the same, because W is W. All right, so that's our equation. And look what we got. We got the same type of variable, the same type of variable. Even though it's in two different places, it's the same type of variable, and that's going to enable us to solve for W. And then we're going to go back and solve for L once we solve for W. We're going to figure out W first, then once we figure that out, then we go go here and say, okay, we'll just add 36 to whatever W is. And then we're going to have the length. All right? And that's how you do any, any problem like this that you ever see. So now what we're going to do is distribute a little bit. I'm going to do 2 times 36. I'm going to bring the 260 down. 2 times 36 is 72. How do I know that? Because if I break 36 up into 30 and 6, 2 times 30 is going to be 60. 2 times 6 is going to be 12. I add 60 and 12, I get 72. That's where the 72 comes from. Then I'm going to do 2 times W because this is distributed property because the 2 is outside the parentheses. The 2 is next to the parentheses. There's no plus sign in between the 2 and the parentheses. There's no minus sign in between the 2 and the parentheses. There's no division sign in between the 2 and the parentheses. So whenever that happens, that means you're doing multiplication. It means you're doing multiplication. So 2 times W is just 2W. So it's positive. So it's plus 2W. Now, we don't do, we don't multiply the two by this two W because this two don't got nothing to do with that two W. Some people make that mistake. You only multiply the two by everything inside the parentheses. You only multiply the two by everything inside the parentheses. All right, so now I'm going to do an algebra trick, which is to combine like terms. So we got two sixes equal to 72 plus four W. Two W's and two W's all together, that's four W's. Now, my goal and our goal, whenever we solve in any equation, is to isolate the variable all by itself on one side of the equation. So first, I'm going to isolate 4w, and then I'm going to get rid of the 4. So what I got to get rid of? I got to get rid of the 72, and I got to get rid of the 4. Get rid of the 72, and get rid of the 4. Get rid of the 72, and get rid of the 4. How do I get rid of 72? I do the opposite operation. This is a positive 72. The opposite of a positive is a negative. So then, therefore, we're going to subtract. Now, if I do it on the right side of the equation, I also need to do it on the left side of the equation. Minus 72. Boom, boom. 72 minus 72. Now, 260 minus 72. You got to know how to do some mental math. You could take out a calculator and do that, but I hope you wouldn't take out a calculator to do, to do 260 minus 72. 260 take away 60 is 200. There's another 12 you still got to take away. So 200 minus 12 is going to be 190 minus 2, which is 188. So that's 188 is equal to 4w. Now, how do I solve for w? I'm gotta, I am got to get rid of this 4. You do the opposite operation to get rid of the 4. The 4 is involved in multiplication because 4w means 4 times w. That's what 4w means. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide. And if I divide on the right side of the equation, I also got to divide on the left side of the equation. Now, again, we could break out the calculator and do 188 divided by 4. Or we can use mental math. Think about it like this. This is kind of like the, uh, we can call this the partial quotients method. 188 divided by 4. We could break 188 down into one number that I know is a multiple of 4. And then the other number, we see if that's a multiple of 4. Because if it is, then that means 188 is a, mul is a, is a multiple of 4. And 188 is divisible by 4. So I know that, I know that one from doing a lot of geometry and trigonometry, I know that 180 is a multiple of 4 because 4 times 45 is 180. So if I break 188 into 180 and 8, 180 divided by 4 is 45, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I add the 45 to the 2, I get 47. So that means that 188 divided by 4 must be equal to 47. And if you don't believe that, you can confirm it with your calculator. All right, so you got 47. Another thing we could have did was this. Check this out. We could have broke 188 down into 160 and 28. 160 and 28. 160 divided by 4 is 40. Just like 16 divided by 4 is 4. So 160 divided by 4 is 40. What's left over? If you take 160 out of 188, 28 is left over. 
If 28 is left over, what's 28 divided by 4? 7. How you know that? Because that's division facts. How you know that's a division fact? Because you know your multiplication facts. You know 4 times 7 is 28. So you know 28 divided by 7 is 4. So that's another way to know that. So you would put 40 with the 7 to still get 47. That's another way to get 47. It's a lot of ways to do this, right? Math got a whole bunch of cheat codes, a whole bunch of different, you know, loopholes and tricks you can use to figure different things out. You know, that's one of the reasons I like math. So you got 47 equals W. So this is the width. That's the width of the soccer field. So the soccer field is 47 feet wide, right? So this is 47 feet wide. This is 47 feet wide. Now, what's the length though? Remember the problem said this. It said the length is 36 feet more than the width. So that means all I got to do is take this 47, add 36 to it. That's all I got to do. So what's 47 plus 36? Let's do some mental math. Let's break it down by place value. Let's add 40 and 30, right? Let's do the 40 plus the 30. That's 70. Then do the 7 plus the 6. That's 13, right? What's 70 plus 13? 83. 83. So that means that that's 83 feet, right? So that's 83 feet. So that means the dimensions of this soccer field in this local part are 83 feet. Yeah, that little um, apostrophe is the feet symbol. All right. These are the dimensions of this soccer field. 83 feet by 47 feet. All right. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm just checking over my notes to make sure I, I talked about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, so, yeah, just as a recap, when you see a problem like this, do yourself a favor, draw a picture if you can. Draw like a rudimentary picture. Uh, then write the formula down that you're going to use, right? Read the information and then figure out what formula you're going to use. And then write your expressions down that are in the formula. And then write them in a way where you only have one type of variable, right? So you see we got W and then we got 36 plus W. If we had W and L, we got two different variables. We can't, using that, we're not able to figure out a single numerical value. We're not able to do that, all right? Um, and then get to solving. Then you got to do the algebra. So we got to know how to solve equations. And I got a lot of video. I got a whole playlist on solving linear equations. So if you got issues with solving equations, I got plenty of videos for you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you like this video, share this video, tell other people about it. Anybody you know that plays soccer, let them see this video, all right? So they can see the relevance of math. Because I know there's a lot of people out here that play soccer, they love soccer, but they go to school, they sit in math class, like, this is boring, this is irrelevant, you know, because they don't understand the relevancy of it. This is the relevancy of it, right? It's re relevant to everything, really. You just have to figure out how it's relevant. You know, sometimes your teacher won't be able to show you how it's relevant. Sometimes you got to just do the work and figure it out yourself. So, yeah. So, like and share these videos. Um, also, shout out to Ghana, right? Um, shout out to Osaji Fo Kwame Nkrumah, who was the first president of Ghana when it became independent in 1957, or maybe it was 1958. Um, shout out to uh, Joseph P. Donqua, um, J. Casely Hayford, uh, a lot of these names. In case you haven't heard of them, definitely do your research on these people. I'm just name dropping. You know, I'm name dropping because these are people that are significant that were from Ghana. Or, well, it was actually known as the Gold Coast when it was colonized by Great Britain um, prior to its, its political independence. Um, it still hasn't achieved its economic independence. Um, so, you know, hopefully through Pan-Africanism, it will be able to achieve its economic independence and true political independence at some, at some point in the future. So definitely do your research on Ghana, Osaji Fo, Kwame Nkrumah, who this brother, Kwame Toure, worked with closely, um, which is part of why his name, he renamed himself in 1973 as Kwame Toure, because previously he was known as Stokely Carmichael, that was his birth name, and he renamed himself because after there was a coup in Ghana, after Nkrumah took over and became president, Nkrumah was, an unable, was unable to come back into the country, so Ahmed Sekou Toure, who was the president in Guinea, a neighboring country, who also was a Pan-Africanist, invited him to come to Guinea to be co-president with him. So, and Kwame Toure ended up being a political secretary to both of those brothers. And he renamed himself Kwame Toure to Kwame from Kwame Nkrumah and Toure from Akabe Sekou Toure and renamed himself Kwame Toure in, the in 1973. 
So, you know, I'm just name dropping. You know, I name drop Kwame Nkrumah, Joseph B. Donqua, J. Casely Hayford, and, you know, the list goes on. There are a lot of significant people uh, from the country of Ghana that we need to know about and we should be aware of. And our children should definitely be aware of as well. All right. So um, practice problems like this. Make sure you practice word problems. Don't run from word problems. Run to the word problems. Right. Follow a systematic process in order to solve them and keep going. Keep practicing. Keep practicing. And then you'll become very proficient. All right. Go get some practice. I'll see you on the next video. Peace.